Hey there guys, Angry Viking Man from CZForum.com. Today we have with us Mr. Jason Morton from CZUSA. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do for the company, uh, how you came to be where you are now. Sure. I, uh, I guess first of all I do the marketing uh, for the company, so that takes uh, advertising, uh, different promotions, public events, uh, basically anytime we're wanting to get uh, you know the CZ message out to the, uh, the shooting public and the uh, consumers. Uh, anybody who's interested in uh, you know, self-defense, you know, the hunting, to uh, you know, just going out and having fun linking. Anytime we want to take uh, our message and try and get the word out about our guns, then uh, that kind of falls in my wheelhouse. Talking to people like us. That's right. Uh, what new products are you most excited about for 2015? Oh, no question about it. The uh, Scorpion pistol is uh, the yeah. most exciting new product we have. It uh, is a super cool gun, uh, very versatile. You know, bring it as a pistol. Uh, the arm brace, uh, you know, we have the adapters for that. Uh, hopefully, uh, the ATF will come back. We have a letter in with them. We're uh, hoping that they'll come back and say that uh, people can go ahead and do a form one on that SBR uh, without you know, uh, having to worry about the 922 compliant parts. Well, that's if they do, then we're going to uh, start working on getting 922 compliant parts and put that together in a package with stocks and SBR. That's fantastic. That's one of the questions I was going to ask. Um, are there any old products that you wish you could bring back? Oh, you know, there, there are a lot of cool old products. Uh, you know, I, uh, the, I recently bought a, 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 a Bruneau. It was made in 1922. You know, it's it a beautiful gun. It's uh, still relevant today. It's, 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 uh, it was basically a 98 Mauser variant. And uh, super smooth, super sweet, you know, accurate rifle still today. But uh, the problem with that rifle and, uh, and uh, a lot of the older products, you know, ones that are you know, my favorites, and a lot of CZ's older pistols are, are Know, great pistols, but uh, functionally, uh, ergonomically, they're they're still very relevant to uh, to shooters for a lot of different reasons. But you can't be competitive in today's market. Everything is uh, so price driven that most of those products use they're very intense, uh, you know, very intensive as far as the machine needs to be done on. Other things, if you know, if the average consumer was uh, wanting to spend a couple thousand dollars on a, uh, you know, on a, on a you know, mid-level, you know, mid-level priced, uh, you know, gun for the range or for carrier or whatever, it'd be okay. But it, it just takes so much money and so much investment to uh, to bring out, you know, a new model. And even if you're using an old model, all you have is the uh, is the blueprint. Yeah. You know, you still don't have the uh, capabilities to put it into production. There's a, there's still a whole, tool there's a whole other side of tooling it. Exactly. There's a whole other side. And, you know, you, you design a gun on one side, and then you have to go through just as much to design how to make the gun. Yeah. So the, just the amount of investment uh, required to make some of those old designs is, is pretty huge. So while I'd like to make some, make some, you know, the reality is is that we can never afford to make well, the good thing is a lot of the stuff, like uh, you know, the ones that fire the toke red rounds and stuff like that, you can still sort of find them and oh, yeah. import them in a CNR kind of thing, you know, and get them that way. You know, I've been able to find a, a lot of uh, even our old products. Uh, uh, I found a, uh, a duo, you know, at a local shop. It was sitting there, you know, just on the shelf one day when I walked in and said, "Hey, I want to buy that." And uh, my buddy that owns the shop, he said, "Uh, well, you know." That's cool, but uh, wouldn't you rather buy this one, about the same size? You know, he said, no, that's not what I want. It. He said, this is the first handgun that we ever produced, you know? So it's uh, just one of those deals where uh, I love going out there, like I said, that, that, that Bruneau that I bought as well. But, uh, oh shoot, I forgot the first part of you get me sidetracked on all these, <laughs> all these older guns. I get excited about it's it. Just if you get any, bring any back any old, old ones you want. Like personally, my, myself, I would like to see another the VZ58 come back. Yeah. Uh, a VZ. lot of the people, like especially in Canada and stuff, they can't get AKs, so that's what right. they have is the VZ58. And they and they can they can get some pretty good ones. Even they can get a lot closer to the original than we can. Uh, so some 
some of the things, it's funny how those uh, laws work, but some of the things in Canada, they can get uh, a better, more uh, authentic product than we can. And, you know, there, there are cool things out there. I think it'd be awesome to uh, to get a, uh, a semi-auto print, you know, one of the original ones. Uh, we're coming back in. Now, not sure we didn't produce that. That was, you know, a, a CZ design. But, uh, you know, that'd be a cool thing to, to see. I mean, they're, they're, I can't think of very many of them that I wouldn't, you know, like to see come back in, to tell you the truth. Uh, you know, going back to the new products for 2015, I'm really excited about the 805 brand pistol. Uh, and further after that, like you were talking about with the Scorpion, maybe not have to have 922 R compliance if they, you know, the ATF comes back with that. Personally, that's the reason why I want that is to complete my three gun set. Sure. So I can have all CZ three guns. Yeah. 805 is a, a great gun. I mean, we've been shooting it. I've been lucky to shoot it for several years now since, I guess, really since they were, uh, you know, working on developing the, uh, the original ones, you know, the select fire service rifle. And uh, I, I have to be honest, that's the next gun I'm going to get. That's, uh, I've been waiting for uh, several years for us to have the semi auto version. And, and as soon as they start coming in, I'm definitely going to grab them. My, uh, you know the the, the the new Scorpion Evo is a is an incredible uh, you know you know personal defense weapon, but uh, and uh, the 805 Bren you know it definitely has you know very valid uses in that area too. But I I've always wanted to go prey dog hunting on a motorcycle. And that you know that 805 Bren's going to fit in the saddlebags. You know I'm going to I'm going to be a little bit limited on how much ammo I can take with me. But, just get uh, you a front fork uh, holster and just yeah. You know, I mean, I think it'd be great. You know, put a little uh, instead of a instead of your bedroll on the back of the bike. You know, just roll up your shooting mat and go out yeah. there. You know, a little uh, 223. You know, pistol sized gun. You don't have to worry about you know it being long, but uh, it's still going to be plenty accurate with 300 yard shots on prairie dogs. I may miss her once in a while, but I, I uh, I've done some work with the uh, select fire version of that one with the short barrel and it's, it's plenty accurate to, to have a lot of fun with. So things like that. Also I think it's going to be a lot of fun to uh, to use on, uh, on white tails, on pulling operations. Oh yeah. It's, it's super accurate, uh, especially if we're sitting in a blind uh, doing some management work. Uh, I already have plans to take it out of Texas. Uh, going to be hunting down there with some friends that have, uh, you know, have uh, ranches that they have to, you know, they, uh, the state, they're enrolled in the program, they have certain numbers. You have to take this many numbers here on. I'm really looking forward to it's going to be a blast. And, you know, there's a lot of work that can be done in different parts of the country with suppressors now. Like, too. Yeah, so, living in Tennessee, I get access to everything. We can hunt with suppressors. And talk about a lot of fun. You know, the, the one thing I hate about, you know, hunting pigs is, they usually only give you time to shoot one of them before they run off. Yeah. And those ranchers down there want them all gone. Yes, you know, the restaurant it gives you, opens up some new possibilities and gets some pork on the ground. Yeah. Well, changing gears a little bit, uh, CCUSA uh, contributes to shooting sports such as Scholastic Shooting Program and uh, other things, uh, which includes team trap and pistol shooting. What other kinds of youth and shooter development does uh, programs that CCUSA contribute to? You know, we, we try and work with a lot of them. We have pretty limited resources, so what we can actually uh, individually go out and do is a little bit limited. But uh, we do offer uh, a lot of assistance in the way of discounts uh, to, uh, to a bunch of different programs. We work with the uh, Youth Hunter Education Competition uh, kids, uh, the Boy Scouts, the, uh, oh gosh, 4-H uh, uh, shooting teams. Uh, all the way up through, uh, we have programs that, that work with the uh, you know college uh, sporting place teams. But uh, you know, I have personal interest in that. You know, I was I was an Eagle Scout, and uh, was also and uh, that was one of the uh, one of the things that really gave you know gave me an introduction to shooting. You know, my my folks weren't uh, into shooting. In fact, uh, you know, they they definitely uh, supported my uh, my addiction, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I think I uh, got my first 22 you know, when I was about 10 years old. Um, but uh, you know, the, the scouting program helped develop that. And I think it's important uh, any, any of those programs that you know teach safety and uh, marksmanship and start to uh, uh, inspire that passion in the 
youth is good for us. We, we really need that next generation as far as the shooting sports and the, and the uh, hunting communities involved. Since you began shooting at a late age, uh, are you teaching your children to shoot, and do you feel it's important to teach kids firearm safety and competency at an early age? I think I think firearm safety is uh, super important. I think it's I think it's good not to push the kids. Uh, my daughter has definitely not uh, indicated any interest in the shooting sports, unfortunately, but she is only two, so <laughs> we do have a little uh, a little way, a little ways to wait on that. She goes through. Uh, she goes through our house and she uh, she'll show a lot of interest in the, some of the hunting trophies on the wall, maybe. But uh, you know, with a with a with a you know with a young child in the house, we uh, make sure we keep you know everything locked up. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in uh, uh, you know keeping it safe and secure yet yet accessible. So we take advantage of uh, you know the quick access handgun safes and uh, for the ones that we want to be available ready to use. Basically, if it's if it's not on my person, and uh, then I uh, make sure make sure that it's safe for the kids. But it, it, like you say, with this, you know, safety is super important. I think uh, I think is any any time that we can give back to the next generation, as far as that's concerned, is great. There are a lot of good programs out out there that we do try and support. Uh, they're uh, you know an outdoor mentor type of program uh, where they take kids that. You know, those of us that, that do have the opportunity to, to go to the range or uh, you know go on a, on a quail hunt or a pheasant hunt, uh, take uh, take the youth uh, out there with them that have that have that interest, have that desire, but not necessarily that opportunity. So I think it's important we participate in programs like this as well, not only with our own kids, but trying to spread the message. I remember going hunting with my father when I was five. You know, good quail hunting, and I was the bird dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you do a lot of hunting, so you know bird hunting, big game, and you've actually hunted some dangerous game in Africa. What's your favorite thing to hunt? Oh gosh, you know, I suppose it's whatever's next. <laughs> uh, you know, I've had some hunts that were that were uh, that were definitely great, and memorable, but it's not always uh, it's it's not always because of the animal. Sometimes it's because of the people you're with. Sometimes it's because of the uh, you know the country that you get to see. Uh, my you know, my 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 last uh, my last four hunts, I, I only I only got I only got one animal on, but every one of them was great. Uh, in Missouri, I, I got uh, I got to hunt at home, I got to hunt by myself. I didn't have I didn't have a camera following me, and uh, it's just great to get out there. Uh, one thing, you know, I started uh, hunting big game as, as a bow hunter, and uh, I loved spending time in a tree, and when the uh, Anything from you know, uh, you know, watching a coon come by to a bobcat, you know, you know, thinking about coming up your tree. I had a, I had an owl one time come in and try and take my eyes out because it's the only thing they could see. Uh, so it threw the arms up and it ended up, luckily ended up ended up uh, turned off. But uh, you know, you're, you when the birds fly by, you know, geese or whatever it happens to be, you know, you hear the air whistling through their wings. Just that whole experience of getting outdoors is awesome. And I, you know. Get out there by yourself. I think it's more in tune to it. Uh, the hunt before that, went home with some great friends and uh, had the opportunity to, to work with uh, uh, some uh, college kids that are uh, uh, in a degree program where they're uh, working towards becoming outfitters and guys. And so that was really cool seeing uh, the next generation of people getting ready and, and wanting to specialize in, in this industry. Uh, so it's special, you know, for that. And, uh, the hunt before that, again, hunt with great friends, meeting new friends. I actually got a really nice mule deer up in South Dakota. We were hunting, we were hunting just south of the Badlands, and it's a, it's a, it's an awesome, awesome uh, part of the world. It's, it's beautiful if you if you ever have been up there and see the Badlands and you know part parts of it, uh, parts of it look beautiful and green. Other parts of it looks like another planet. You'd think you'd be on the moon. Yeah. You, it's just, it's a, it's so cool to have, have the opportunity to see those different places. You know, before that, I've been on a quest for a trophy elk for a couple of years now. And it's not over yet. Yeah. You know, I, I, some I, of those I, things take a lifetime. I got skunked this year. You know, so uh, my wife wasn't too happy. She she had a uh, we had a little bit of venison left in the freezer, and uh, she uh, was excited about me, you know, going to this elk hunt. And I said, yeah, this, you know, we're going to a great place. It's, 
it's, it's, it's a sure thing. It's well, in the bag. It's <laughs> never a sure thing. And she actually took the venison out of the freezer and uh, ended up taking it over to about three hours to her folks' place and, and uh, saying, here, put this in the freezer, eat this up. Well, I come home without an elk and she's, she's not too happy about it. But, uh, so aside from hunting and other things like that, do you compete at all? You know, I don't compete a whole lot anymore. I still have fun, and I'll go to a, you know a, a fundraiser for <coughs> excuse me for different uh, charitable organizations, or, uh, Boy Scouts, uh, you know, like a sporting place tournament, and uh, maybe I'll go out and shoot uh, one or two uh, IPSC or, or uh, pistol matches a year. That's uh, how I got started in the industry is uh, working with the pistol competition. And I've always enjoyed that. Never been exceptional. I've always been very solid and mediocre. As, I always come in the middle of the pack myself. As far as that's concerned, but uh, but uh, it was uh, you know something I still enjoy doing. What's your favorite shooting discipline? You know, if you like long range or oh, pistol gosh. competition or play shooting? You know, right now, it, it changes. It changes. I, 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 I've never been diagnosed with ADD, but uh, but when you take a look at you know what my interests are shooting wise, they will cycle. You know, I started out uh, you know when I was a kid, you know, shooting the 22, you know, at my folks' farms. You know, when Dad didn't have me building the fence or something, I'd try and escape up in the up in the mountains on down the Ozarks where we were, and uh, just had a blast with it. But uh, you know, I've gone through. Uh, Interest phases, uh, sporting plays phases. Uh, skeet has always been one of my favorite shotgun games. Uh, I, I, one of the opinion that it's 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 kind of like a, a kata. You know, it's, if you do, you do everything perfect, you go through the motions right. You just, the gun doesn't even have to be loaded. You, you, the target will still break if you do your part. I haven't got that to really work yet, but yeah, I, yeah. I think it's possible. It's a Zen type of thing. Uh, the uh, you know that I, I spent about 10 years, you know, uh, you know as an avid uh, pistol shooter in, in Ipswich, bowling pin, and, uh, steel matches. I, at one point, I was probably shooting about five matches a week. And so, uh, you know, you just cycle through. Right now, my interest lies uh, just kind of cycling back to the uh, rifle accuracy side. Uh, I've been getting more and more interested in some of the longer range uh, shooting. Been a lot of fun. You know, and everything from getting back to getting back to hand loading, you know, you know for getting super super uh, particular on your on the ammo that you're using or producing, uh, setting up the rifle. Been spending a lot of time uh, you know, learning how to how to shoot a, a rifle, uh, relearning. I, mean, I, I took uh, you know, riflery in college, the military science department, but. Uh, Hey, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of it has to be relearned. You don't you don't use it for a while. You get back to basics. You know? yeah. uh, myself, I really like the. Well, I started out with CZs. I was mainly in the pistol stuff because I was competing in IDPA. And uh, then a couple of years ago, uh, you guys were nice enough to send me that 455 Armin Evolution. Oh yeah. It made me fall in love with the 22 <laughs> all over again. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a 22 with my name on it. I'm pretty sure now that we have that. Uh, 455 Ultralux, it, it's it's probably going to find its way into, into, into my safe pretty soon. But I've got to figure out uh, a night that the wife's not going to be home so I can sneak it, sneak it into the house. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, that, that's definitely uh, one of the next ones on my list. Well, thank you very much, Jason, for your time You're and welcome. speaking with us on camera. Hope everybody gets to you know have a better sense of the people that help to uh, produce and market these wonderful guns that we all love. Thank you very much. All right.